We've got some breaking news on another Fed retirement, and Steve Leisman has those details for us. Steve. Morgan, thank you. Robert Kaplan. Robert Kaplan, the president of the Dallas Fed, announcing just moments ago that he will retire as of October 8th. Uh, Kaplan, of course, was one of the ones who became a focus of a conflict of interest at the Federal Reserve. Uh, Kaplan saying that because of the issues surrounding his finances, he made the decision to retire so as not to take away focus from the Federal Reserve. He says, the Federal Reserve is approaching a critical point in our economic recovery as it deliberates the future path of monetary policy. Unfortunately, the recent focus on my financial disclosure risks become a distraction to the Federal Reserve's execution of that vital work. For that reason, I've decided to retire. He's been president of the Dallas Fed for six years. A statement put out by the Dallas Fed has Jerome Powell praising him and the president and the uh, chair of the Dallas Board. Board of Directors, Kaplan maintaining that during his tenure, he adhered to all Federal Reserve ethical standards and policies. My securities, investing activities and disclosures met bank compliance rules and standards. Uh, Kaplan's disclosures showed multiple multi-million dollar trades in individual stocks. It, uh, Kaplan maintained that he had made all trades uh, during um, uh, the blackout, outside of the blackout period when the Federal Reserve officials are banned from trading and cannot talk about monetary and economic policy. He is the second uh, Federal Reserve president to announce retirement today. Uh, Eric Rosengren, the Boston Fed president, who also uh, made several trades in mortgage-backed securities, which the Federal Reserve was uh, buying at the time that uh, Rosengren was trading. He retired, announced his retirement this morning as of September 30th. Wilfred? So, so, Steve, uh, clearly Rosengren cited uh, health reasons, whereas um, Kaplan's being much more clear and, and, and citing these potential distractions and, and financial disclosures, though it seems like it's too much of a coincidence for uh, that not to apply to Rosengren as well. My, my question to you is, uh, using the words of Mr. Kaplan, that, that it was a distraction, were the misdemeanors, if that's the right word, for both of these two noticeably worse than those of Chair Powell, or, or will the focus now pivot to him too? Because he, he himself admitted last week that he needed to do better on that front. Uh, that's an interesting question. Um, certainly, um, Kaplan and Rosengren were acts of commission in the sense that they were actively trading. Uh, in the sense of Rosengren, who, by the way, uh, says he did not make any uh, illegal trades or violate code of conduct, just to be clear about that, he was out there buying and selling during the year the same assets the Fed was buying. Kaplan did not seem to be the same assets the Fed was buying, but he made trades on multiple days that he says were outside of the uh, 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 blackout period, but it's not disclosed on his form. Powell owned the municipal bonds in the year before, in the years before, the Fed began buying them. He said in a perfect world he wouldn't have owned them, but he said there were problems if he bought and sold them. I don't know that Powell will face the same type of pressure here. Um, and I don't know, by the way, if either Rosengren or, or Kaplan would face any legal jeopardy in what they've done here. It does not appear, at least initially, that there is anything unlawful, at, at least initially here. Uh, more of the impression that it gives of Fed officials buying and selling repeatedly. 37 trades from Rosengren uh, of MBS, 22 trades of multi-million dollar stocks for Kaplan during the year. T t totally uh, agree. It doesn't imply anything illegal. I think the, the key point in all of this, Steve, as we've discussed many times on this network, is it's absurd that the rules were so flexible in the first place, not that these individuals broke any rules yes. uh, or laws uh, that existed. And, and just to kind of offset my, my prior question, the fact that Chair Powell is making statements for both of these two people, backing them up and saying what a great service they've given, does suggest that the broader Fed board is trying to draw a line under this and, and isolate just these two individuals uh, as opposed to, to it going further. I think that sounds right, Wilfred. You remember he was, uh, Powell <clears throat> was asked last week during the press conference if Kaplan and Rosengren still had his, their, his support? And he did not answer that directly. So the writing perhaps was on the wall last Wednesday that uh, Powell uh, did not countenance the trades and acts of Rosengren and Kaplan. He said, hey, this was a complicated situation. But he didn't answer directly the question of whether or not he still supported Rosengren and Kaplan. There was one other set of trades we talked about, which was uh, Thomas Barkin from the Richmond Fed, who also owned individual corporate bonds 
previous to the Federal Reserve buying them. The outrage does not seem to be there on those two the way it was on Rosengren and Kaplan, just gauging the temperature out there on the story, Wolfen.